Hi, my name is Sean Carney and this is Windows PowerShell 101 for Everyone, a series designed to help out the everyday IT person get up to speed with Windows PowerShell and manage their Microsoft environments with far greater efficiency. So today we're going to show you a simple concept that comes along with Windows PowerShell. The idea that you don't actually have to learn it just to use it. So in DBScript we had to learn it to use it. You had to learn how to code. Even with some of the older console commands like NetShell, DSQuery, and iSCSI CLI, you had to learn their basic syntax just to make them useful. This is where things are different with Windows PowerShell. Many of the GUI environments all the way up to Server 2012 R2 the actions in the GUI will generate a sample script of whatever you just did at the end. And that sample script will be in Windows PowerShell. Now, with that sample script, you can often just copy and paste the relevant line into, say, PowerShell ISE, edit the content relevant to you, and just run it. So without even knowing code, you can run the same action, say, Active Directory, multiple times, just by changing the needed content, such as the group or username. So let's pop over to my domain controller, my server 2012 R2 box, and show you an example. Okay, so here we are on my domain controller. And I'm going to sit there and do some basic work in Active Directory today. So my first task is the boss has come up to me and said, this new guy I call Trouble. Um, we've determined that he has outlived his usefulness to this company. So I need you to disable him at a moment's notice. And I mean at a moment's notice. Okay. So we know how we do that in Active Directory. So first off, we, we find the user. So let's go and search under this node and see if we can find some trouble. Okay. And Spell the last name actually does happen to be trouble. I'm going to hit enter. Search. Find where trouble is. Oh, looks like it's a couple. I'll have to remember that. So there's Mr. Trouble. And I believe I just simply have to or click on him. And we'll say disable. Now trouble is no longer trouble. Life is good. But. How would I do that in PowerShell? So normally, if I'm new to Windows PowerShell, and my thought process came from this because I used to try working with VBScript and never could, is I was thinking I have to learn PowerShell. I have to learn to make this useful. Because that's how you work with VBS script. You had to actually learn the code to make the VB scripts. And even with the old DOS commands like NetShell and DSQuery, you had to learn the syntax of those commands. But with the Server 2012 R2 and the Active Directory Administrative Center on the newer environments, that's not the case. So you'll see down here, we have a little button that says Windows PowerShell History. And if I click on that, it'll actually expand and show me exactly what it did in Windows PowerShell. In fact, if I want to take that code, I could literally right click on it. Let's just choose Copy. Now I'm going to go to the PowerShell ISC. I could do this with Notepad too. But the reason I'm going to use the ISE, the PowerShell Integrated Scripting Environment, is I can paste that directly in. Now I have an editor. This editor allows me to troubleshoot it, allows me to do other fun things, but it most importantly allows me to edit it and rerun it. So this is the very line that just ran to disable a user in Active Directory. Now here's the cool part. I don't actually have to understand the code. Because what did we do? We found a user whose name was Mr. Trouble. You can see his name clearly on here. And if I look down the rest of the line, there'll be parts, I mean, like user count control, some specific numbers, a domain controller. The only component I'm interested in is his name. So here's the fun part. The boss came up to me and says, well, by the way, Mrs. Trouble was also terminated because we just don't need the two of them hanging around together, working together, you can fire and uh, let's just say cause more trouble. Now, if I want to run this, again, I've just simply edited the name and we're just gonna rerun the same line. I haven't learned any PowerShell. 
All I've learned is that I had a sample script and edited the content within that line and just rerun it. So if I go down to the Active 3 Minister Center, I'm going to check, and sure enough, Mrs. Trouble is disabled as well. How much PowerShell did I learn there? All I learned is that there's a sample script. Now, this sample script, if we take a look at it, I can take this right now, and every time the boss wants to disable people, I can simply say, save that as, and I can store it on my desktop as disable users. We'll have a nice simple disable user script. Disable user .ts Now, if I get to learning more PowerShell, I could actually learn how to have parameters that pop up and say, replace that name automatically. But right now, we're just going to show you some basic stuff that makes PowerShell useful. It's, it's, it's not that you have to learn the code. It's that the code is already there, and all you want to do is replace what you need out of it. So let's um, see if we can find you one that I used to do at work all the time. Let's add a user to a group. So let's pretend that Mr. and Mrs. Trouble are back at work again because honestly it was a mistake and we all had a glass of apple juice to celebrate their re rehiring. And you'll see that there are actions I do in the GUI and there are actions I do in PowerShell. Not really that one is better than the other, but some actions are simply easier to work with. If I'm going to do it multiple times, I'll do it in PowerShell. If I go to do it one talk out of nowhere, I'll do it in the GUI. Now, as you can see, those very actions I just ran in the GUI are echoed back down here in the console. I'm going to clear off the command history. Now, let's say we want to add Mr. Trouble, for whatever crazy reason, to the most scariest group of all, Active Directory Domain Administrators. No, we're not going to do that because, honestly, that would be silly. We're going to have him join the Accounting Security Group. Tell it OK. Action form through. And you can see right down here again, we have the very code that was running PowerShell. Now, let's just say I was handed a list of groups. Now, if I was to do this, and, and let's stay away from code. If I had to do this in the GUI, say, 10 times. And I knew the name of the groups, but it was 10 times. You can see each time I ran it, it takes a little time. Each time I take it, ran a little time. And the console is tied up while I'm doing that. But so here we have the sample commandlet generated when we added our good friend, Mr. Trouble, to accounting. Now, if we had to do this once in the GUI, you'd do it in the GUI. If I have to do it multiple times, you can see when we ran that action in the GUI, there was a slight pause. As they execute the action, it tied up the console. If we had to run it multiple times, we'd probably find that every single time it ran that action, there was a similar pause. The advantage we have with PowerShell is, let's just say, the boss handed me a list of security groups. And again, I'm going to stay away from code. I'm going to go with a very simple scenario. Because this is the things I used to run into the first time I encountered PowerShell, is I was handed a list of things to do. If I had to do it once, I just do an Active Directory do it once. When somebody handed me a list of things to do, I found it was way easier to simply take that list and copy paste the changes into the command that they gave me. So let's just say I wanted to add it to two groups in this environment. So I've got an email and he wants me to add Mr. Trouble to two groups. One is called Security Level 1. and read only auditing. Okay. Now, we haven't actually learned PowerShell. All we've done is taken the sample script given to us by Microsoft and edited what we needed out of it. So to make PowerShell useful for me, I've just simply taken these examples. Yes, yeah, save my script. And just run them.
And now, if I was going to our good friend, Mr. Trouble, in the Administrative Center, let's find our good friend, Trouble. T-R-O-U-B-L-E. And let's check his memberships now. All right, we found Mr. Trouble. And let's see what groups he's a member of Active Directory now. Let's go to member of. And now, we can see the additional groups that are added to him with Windows PowerShell are now active. So, we didn't actually have to learn PowerShell code. We didn't have to learn how to navigate the console. All we had to do was learn how to do copy, paste, look for the information we need to change, and just directly change it. So if I had to do this 20 times and somebody gave me a list, rather than going to the console and choosing the groups and searching the groups and finding the groups and adding groups, I can actually add those groups directly in by just changing the text in the PowerShell line. Okay, so let's take a look at another simple example. So right now I'm going to show you the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And again, we're going to stick with the concept of you don't actually have to learn PowerShell to make it useful. You don't have to learn the code, the syntax. All you need to do is learn to take some of the sample scripts that Microsoft gives you and maybe just edit the content to meet your needs and a little copy paste and just run it multiple times. So here we're in the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, I'm going to sit there and create a folder for holding drivers for my Hewlett Packard laptop. So new folder, Hewlett Packard drivers. Uh, go next, go next. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see a little button that simply says View Script. Click that. And what is on the screen right now? This is the actual code that ran in Windows PowerShell to generate this change in the interface that created the new folder. Now, if I wanted to run this again, let's go. I go to the PowerShell ISE. And I'll just paste in the very line that it gave me. So if I want to run this again, I go to the PowerShell ISD. I'm going to just paste in the lines it gave me. So here's the very item I just created. I can see by the very name I've typed in this thing, Hewlett Packard drivers. Uh, comments are, look like they're empty. But I don't see anything else referencing the information again, just Hewlett Packard drivers. So let's just say I had to create another folder. Let's say I had to create three more folders. I'm going to take this line, paste it, and I'm going to make one for, let's see, I got some Acer laptops, and maybe some Sony laptops. And you know what? I've actually got some from a company in Toronto. That makes laptops too. So what I'm going to do is all you've seen is I just changed the content in that line name because that's where it said Hewlett Packard with the new content. And all I have to do to make this action happen multiple times again without having to actually learn PowerShell is simply copy the lines and just change the content. Now I can simply run this and if I go into my Microsoft Deployment Toolkit again finish off my wizard here, you'll see that the very code in PowerShell that was generated for the Hewlett Packard, just by editing that one line to say Acer, Sony, Sigma, I've now actually generated multiple lines. So yes, you can spend time learning PowerShell and only start to learn use PowerShell when you think you've learned enough. Or you can sit there and take advantage of the sample scripts given to you by Microsoft. Look at the content and see if it's just a matter of editing that little line and pasting that little line to make your tasks easier. Will it save you thousands of hours? Maybe it can. Maybe the task you're doing is something in MDT we're doing a site replication. We know that when you run that, that can type the console easily for hours at a time depending on where you're replicating the data to. But because it generates a sample script, you could simply take that sample script copy the line three, four, five times, view three, four, five different sites, 
edit the site names directly, and just run that. Did you actually learn PowerShell code? No. But did you learn just enough to make it useful for you? Yes? That's all it ever has to do. So that's all we have for today. Remember to check out these great PowerShell resources online each day. You can reach me on Twitter at Energize Tech. This is Sean Carney signing away for another day, reminding you to remember, the power of Shell is in you.